Um, hiya, welcome back to Student Music Network. I'm Alice and I'm super excited to be sat chatting with North London's face of new club pop rave music, Rose Grey. How are you doing? Well, I love that little tag. Um, yeah, well, we're really, really excited about like all your music. It's just such a perfect, fun merge of like classic, nostalgic, naughty's pop, and then like crossing that with the kind of stuff you'd expect to hear in like an underground um, party in London, which is awesome. So I'm really excited to say that our network of student radio stations across the country are including you in a spot on our radio class of 2023. So I hope that's put a spring in your step today. Thank you for having me. No, it's an absolute pleasure. I can't wait to kind of chat more and get to know you. Um, and for anyone that might be kind of discovering your music for the first time, I think it'd be really awesome if you could kind of introduce yourself, tell us about yourself and like how you would describe your own music. Well, yes. So, yes, I'm Rose Grey. I am a born and bred Londoner from, um, from a little place called Walthamstow, which is the end of the Victoria line, if anyone's familiar with... Um, the underground lines um yeah i've been um i've been making music for quite a while um like classic kind of like dropped out of college thought i was going to be like a pop star like instantly and then um, quite harshly um came to the realization that i needed to just figure out what the hell i wanted to say and and, and who i was so i um yeah, found I found myself sort of like two years ago, sort of starting this project. Um, that is, I kind of call it ethereal, like anthemic, electronic dance pop fusion. Um, and at the moment, I'm definitely like very much in this world of yeah. I think it, I mean it's definitely like I'm making pop music, and I've. I've loved pop music like from birth. I was like obsessed with Christina Aguilera growing up. I S Club Seven, I think I like caught like the cusp of that. Like Wicked. I'm like a late nineties baby. So I think like early two thousands I was like obsessed with bands, girl groups. I think steps, like I do remember steps a little bit being um playing being played in my house. <laughs> but um yes, yeah, so grew up like loving pop music. Um I like I've always sort of sung. Um, I come from like, uh, I call them working actors because they are, I come from like a performing arts family, but like very much it's like on and off working. Like we weren't, I wasn't like, they aren't, they aren't famous. My parents are not like, <laughs> like very much from like a normal family who just so happened to be able to pay their bills by being creative. So grew up like with a, an amazing network of like creatives. I just sort of thought it was, I think my family would have been a bit shocked if I'd not done something creative. <laughs> um, uh, yes, yeah, so I yeah, kind of grew up around music, loving music. And I think my kind of project now found it's, found, I found my feet when I was like working loads of jobs and just going out loads and, and ending up at these mad parties. And I was writing music at the time, but like, it just didn't really suit, the music I was making didn't really suit the kind of lifestyle I had and like my friends and my character. I was kind of like making quite like soulful jazz stuff because mm. I had like a big voice, but it didn't necessarily match up to like who I was as a person. Mm. Uh, and then I brought out this song called Save Your Tears in the middle of the pandemic and it actually I mean it didn't like blow up or anything or like go viral but it like got really supported by Radio 1 and I think I sort of just found like oh wow this is actually something quite unique and also feels really me and it's like pop and dance and also quite nostalgic and from that moment actually releasing that song I was like I think this is like what I need to be doing because it feels just feels really authentic and I love it so like from that release really um my project has sort of gone in that way which is creating uh, I guess like poppy dance music but that is for this generation like totally yeah. no it's awesome and I definitely think that sometimes you have to it takes a moment to kind of find the exact sound that you're after and that feels kind of 
authentic to you. Um, so yeah, Prettier Than You came out like a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah, not like yeah, I think like three weeks ago. That's know. amazing. Well, congratulations about it. It's always exciting to have new music out there. Um, and it feels like a real kind of ethereal, groovy take on a breakup song. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like yeah. moving on, finding someone new. So what's the what's the story behind this one? That's the tea. Okay, so I was very heartbroken at the time when I wrote this. And it's like, it almost started off as like a joke because... I sort of said something about how, like, I was just quite blown away by how beautiful all the guys were on Hinge in <laughs> Bristol. <laughs> and, um, and I sort of said something to Bad Sounds, who I wrote it with. Uh, I said something like, God, he's prettier than him. And he's pretty, I was just, yeah. And then they were like, they sort of passed me the SMB7, which is like, it's, Mike was very like in the studio it's just like the first thing if, if there's inspiration coming you just sort of grab the mic and I sort of grabbed it and like blurted out the song and um yeah it was like instant we all just loved it we were just thought it was so funny that I'd written a song about comparing beautiful men <laughs> it's amazing no it's, you could definitely tell you're kind of having fun with the music and if that feels authentic to you then it's as a listener it's just um like a real uplift to kind of put it on like in the afternoon um but yeah things are kind of quite exciting for you right now like you're in LA um and I know you've had like a headline set over the summer and all that kind of stuff so t are you, can you tell me more about like what's coming up like what your ideas are for 2023 yeah, I'm really looking forward to 2023. I mean, 2022 has been great. I've like released, it's might been my like first release with my label and like I released my EP Synchronicity. When was that release? July? July. Um, but I've got another EP coming. Um, I've got another single coming called Promise Me, which kind of like similar to Prettier Than You, it's sort of in that kind of like, I call it like beautiful heartbreak music. Like... Mm. Boric heart music. like I was very heartbroken but it's you can definitely dance to it um and that comes out soon which I'm really excited about um I've been in LA for like two weeks now I extended my flights a few times because I've just been I've been writing like I think the best stuff I've ever written out here actually like right well thank you ever so much for, for chatting me for the last 10 minutes or so but I, I always like to end on this question it's my always my favorite question to ask people but what has your kind of highlight been across your musical journey so far okay so this is actually really recent I had my headline show in uh, London Night Tales Loft which is just like my dream little venue it's proper fun um and it's the first moment I've like performed and I've like actually seen like basically everyone in the audience like singing the words it's never really happened to me um but my my nan my nanny Barbara is such an icon and she was front row like dancing like she was raving I'd say she was raving <laughs> music and she's always been someone that loved my kind of like big voice like she loved it when I was like making kind of like soul soulful jazz music she was very happy with me in that world but she um she was loving my set and, I, and that was like honestly I was like this is having your nan I mean she's very young like she's like a young man I think she's like 61 or something but like she was she was loving it love that, that. see I, I really enjoyed seeing that that made me very happy